it's time to take a look at the all new Volvo EX90, their big new EV SUV, a sister model to the Polestar 3 actually. And I have this remote control here today that I can show you some of the functions even here at this show car. You can see the interesting daytime running light and the even more interesting thing is when you take a closer look here, they mechanically open this horizontal strip to make way for the actual headlamps here. Strong SUV design and the CD value is at 0.29. So it does come at a cost, but do you like the design? Tell me in the comments. Have you seen this part here in the top where you could imagine there's like a taxi sign or something? Well, this is actually the LiDAR, so the laser sensor for all the assistance systems as an additional sensor type. Turning indicators, by the way, here, they replaced the dating running light here in this lower part in a vertical way. Looks quite cool, doesn't it? The lengths here at 5 meters and 4 or 198 inches, so a full-size EV SUV. Wheels here up to 22 inch, these are the big ones indeed, but however, an aerodynamic design. And yeah, even though it's not the most aerodynamic vehicle, there's a big battery inside, so it's 107 kilowatt hours net and we can expect somewhat a range of 500 kilometers or 300 miles done. The door handles here, can I use the remote control for that again, they fold out. Once again, it is somewhat aerodynamic optimization, but we know that door handles won't make a big effect. The wheels actually are more important in that aspect. You always get all-wheel drive, one electric motor in the rear, one in the front, and then you have two different versions, like horsepower trims, and one acceleration is 5.9 seconds, and the quicker one is 4.9 seconds, or we can also say like six seconds and five seconds. Easier to remember to around 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. Recharging has a 250 kilowatt peak and 10 to 80% state of charge in fast charging will take 30 minutes. Bidirectional charging will also be possible. You also get a welcome light signature for the rear lamps. It's pretty cool. And this is here a typical Volvo SUV styling with this vertical orientation. So I think especially in the rear, they did a good job to keep this Volvo heritage, definitely. You also have a goodbye signature then for the rear lamps. And there you can see also where the turning indicator is put. Pretty cool <laughs> indeed as well the light show. Top speed, by the way, is 180 kilometers an hour or 112 miles per hour. And is there a frunk? Yeah, there is one substantial hood here in the front. Then at least a little frunk here and space for some charging cables. This is, by the way, the vehicle color. It's called Vapor Gray. This is here Silver Dawn, so a little bit lighter. And there are more colors available. See it here. So for example, the white one, more golden one. And then we have rather dark tones. So there's no color that is really like screaming out more, you know, subtle Nordic colors, I would take it that way. Here, when the car is unlocked, once again, comes towards me, door closing sound. Is here not ideal, I would say. Maybe it's because of the prototype, but it also has this soft close function. Inside of the door, you can see the whole vehicle is in most cases animal free. Soon more leads to that. Here you can see there's some kind of illumination background from the insert decoy element, also from sustainable renewable resources, this wood decor, for example, different ones are available and everything is reduced basically. Here you do have some window levers that do react, so you can push them down and up. Glad to have that huge door pocket. And then towards the interior right here, capacitive buttons on the steering wheel, hashtag capacitive BS. It does give some feedback here. It's kind of like a mix, I would say. And you can see, we know it also from the EX30, for the seat, they have just one button also here to fold the back part, front or back. So once again, reduction of complexity is one thing. Does it help you or is it just coast cuts? What about you? Tell me in the comments. And then let's get it inside. Here on the seats, this is the only blend that does have some animal material, like 30% wool, 70% recycled PET. This is then more like this fabric surface. You also have a high-grade leather red in three colors. I'll soon show that to you. And then here, headroom with 189 or six foot two is, yeah, there's plenty of headroom left here underneath this fixed panoramic roof. Steering wheel can be adjusted in the infotainment system, actually. And you have this typical high upward seating position. And 
It does remind you also of the previous XC90 generation. Here the EX90 is of course the spiritual successor of the Volvo XC90. Just that they renamed it now because of this whole electrification process. And this will be the black Nordico high grade leatherette without any stitching. Here's again, you know, the fabric how it looks like in the vehicle. Then there's this brown available like here. The brown will have a stitching on the seat or in the gray direction also with stitching. This is like how the whole, you know, high grade leather it looks like. And it's really soft, great quality. And once again, also made from recyclables and overall reducing CO2 in the production. Interior cockpit overview, a very clean, minimalistic design, 14.5 inch screen, vertical way. I find it very beautiful how this, first of all, wood deco element and then matte wood. And then you have this illumination from the back part. Vents are still manually controllable and we still have a manual volume jog in the lower part. At least that. Steering wheel here, plus minus for the volume. That's easy, accessible and yeah, the feedback it does give you is actually quite okay. To put in the gears is here behind the steering wheel, the stalk column. And then you have at least some small digital instruments with the range view, battery cells and so on. There will also be the speed displayed. And there will also be a head-up display available. Pretty cool additional speaker here, by the way, for the Bowers and Wilkins sound system. And the top part here of the dashboard, also soft touch leatherette with wide contrast stitching. Everything else, like here, the temperature control, all in the screen while driving, of course, that's not too good. At least it is somewhat straightforward because it's quite logic here, like bended seat, heated seat, heated steering wheel and so on. This is the main menu. They promise also Apple CarPlay connection. It is based on the Android automotive system. That means you have a native Google Maps support and it's also quite responsive. And it would also calculate the charging stops on the go. So this is actually a very good one. And so much better than all the other manufacturers who try to go their own way and fail by the software. Here in the lower part, by the way, you open the glove box. Upper middle console looks cool here with inductive charging pad and there are some holes that then ventilate the smart one, doesn't get too hot. Pretty clean styling here and you can slide that one open and have adaptive cup holders. And more space here underneath this armrest. In the lower area here, you have a lot of space actually, and then you have two USB-C chargers and an actual seatbelt material to hold maybe another smartphone here and so on. Now very exciting to the rear seating area. First of all, inside of the doors, high-grade leather red material, so the material quality, the impression is really good. Then you have this through bench here, overall a seven-seater setup. There's also difference to the Polestar 3, which does not offer that option. Here you can also go for the excellence, then you would have single seating in the rear. In the second seating row, then it's just a four-seater, but most people will go for that one. Also decent seating comfort here, and with 189 and 6 for 2, I still have a lot of headroom, headroom left. Lack room is a problem in a way, it does fit for, for tall adults, but remembering the Kia EV9, there I had more lack room when a tall driver was driving in front of me, so it works, no doubt about that but I would have expected a little bit more. You can slide the seat forward or backward, and you can also adjust the back part here of the seat, make it a little bit more upright or more to the back. What I find cool is that you can individually adjust them all. So for example, just the middle seat you can slide for. That looks funny, right? <laughs> um, so that is also possible. Then you have this um, known Volvo function that you can actually lift this one here up as a you know, semi-child seat, so to speak. So this will be possible. And then you can lift this one down for some cup holders. Isofix here at the outside seats each. So overall, it's actually quite good in for the comfort for the seating. Yeah, but once again, a little bit more leg room here would have been cool. Let's see how it goes with the third seating row. Very important, when you fold the second seating row, the middle seat, you have to pull the strap, fold, fold the seat down, and then it should not be hidden on the inside, you always have to put it outside because then when you fold it down and really fix it, click it in like this, you need to pull the strap again to get the seat up. And when it's hidden underneath the seat, there's almost no chance you can ever put the seat up again. So yeah, very important. I think not a real customer friendly solution. To fold the second seating row, you have to pull this lever and then manually push it forward. Now I crouch inside. It is really, really 
tiny and I mean I can I can move the seat bench here a little bit more forward um, yeah but sitting here as a tall adult in the rear is kind of impossible headroom wise maybe so if I, but isofix here at the outside so this is more like small children or another isofix child seat situation you have two more child seat possibilities here but um, yeah overall once again comparing to the kia ev9 similar exterior length but the kia ev9 seems like, like double as big on the inside this also belongs to my job putting some light into third seating rows in a dark studio situation um, yeah this is the way <laughs> Opening for the trunk is way down there. It's 310 liters with all the seats up. You can see here, this is the third seating row. Then we just have a small trunk, but then it goes to 655 liters when we fold the seats right here. We have an electric control at the side. And then actually, so now with some light for you. So this is here around 113 meters or 51 inches. And the width is around 110 in meters or 42 inches. However, a cool feature is, we also saw that in the EX30, it is this will it fit? I always say sponsored by IKEA. <laughs> so here you can see all the measurements in length, in meters and inches, also here the width, which is the maximum actually you can measure. And yeah, this is a very helpful thing that you know before what fits in there. Underneath here, you have more space and also this cover can be stored there. The only thing you cannot do is fold these seats from here. For that, you have to go around. There we go. Yep, you have to do some manual work for that. And then we have an all flat area here, actually. So far, the EX90 will be built in China. However, they're also working on a US plan that will also produce this very vehicle. The pricing will be already something above 100,000 euros for both motor versions and comparable Hmm, well, the Kia EV9 also offers seven seats as EV. It will be a little bit cheaper, definitely. Or you can also check out the sister model here, the Polestar 3.